Before we get into the video today, I'd like to tell you all about the 23rd Archive, today's sponsor, where you can read free science fiction, dystopic, zombie, superhero apocalypse fiction, which, yes, is as epic as it sounds, as well as choose your own path adventures and more. It's completely free, though I definitely recommend subscribing to their Patreon to support independent storytelling. You might even see something from yours truly in the future. The link is in the description. There probably isn't a single culture on Earth that hasn't speculated about the significance of the moon. Apart from the sun, it's the largest body in our sky that hints of the cosmos that rests beyond our planet's atmosphere. While we certainly can't blame ancient societies for developing myths about the moon, it's definitely not made of cheese. It might surprise a few of you to find out that many moon myths still persist today. Yes, despite all the efforts of NASA and the scientific community at large, Plenty of misconceptions still persist regarding the moon's size, shape, phases, and even the moon landing. We'll be breaking down a few of these misconceptions, and if this video does well enough, we'll follow up with a part two in the future. But first, be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, check out the Patreon, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Cat. The Lunar and Planetary Institute lists confusion about what causes the moon's phases as one of the biggest misconceptions held by both children and adults. Most often, people confuse lunar eclipses, events which only occur when the Earth's shadow blocks the sun's light from hitting the moon, turning it a deep red, which is the perfect time to have a death metal concert. The Earth blocking the sun's light from hitting the moon has nothing to do with the moon's phases, though. The phases of the moon are actually caused by the sun's light hitting one half of the moon, of course. The crescent, gibbous, and full phases that we observe are mostly caused by the perspective and angle we view the moon from on the Earth's surface. A new moon is caused by the moon being between the sun and the Earth, though a solar eclipse only occurs when the moon transits in front of the sun. A full moon is the exact opposite, of course, requiring the Earth to be between the moon and the sun. But that doesn't stop children from thinking that the sun creates its own shadow, thereby causing shadows on the moon. Yeah, that's a new one for me. Our kid's just precious. However, this isn't just a misconception held by little kids, but also teenagers as old as 16. Back in 1999, a study of common misconceptions held by students in the American school system by Laurel L. Stolle, Gerald H. Crockover, and Daniel P. Shepardson revealed that students aged 9 to 16 held many scientifically inaccurate ideas about the moon's phases. Another misconception among children is the idea that clouds cause the moon's phases. And I know what you're all thinking. That's hilarious and kind of precious. But thinking about it, it is completely reasonable for a child to think that the moon, like the Earth, has clouds. But this is nothing compared to the flat Earth conspiracy that suggests that a third, somehow invisible object passes in front of the sun during an eclipse. Though it makes me wonder if they think that the moon's phases are caused by this same mystery object. This is also completely inaccurate. The moon is not a disk, and there is no third invisible object orbiting the Earth. But this does bring us to the next subject, the idea that the moon makes its own light. The moon definitely does not make its own light, but that doesn't stop people like rapper and quote-unquote astronomer, double emphasis on quotes, Bobby Ray Simmons Jr., or just B.O.B., from claiming that the moon not only makes its own light, but that it's also much smaller and closer to the Earth than those pesky NASA scientists are always saying. B.O.B., or Bob, believes that the moon is really just a flashlight that hovers over the infinite plane of the Earth, or whatever BS these misguided cultists believe. But Bob... Bob? Done. isn't the only one who thinks this. Nope, for some reason, there are a ton of flat earthers that believe this. But here's the truth. Just like the phases of the moon, the sun's light reflecting off of the lunar surface is what causes it to look so bright in our night sky. But incredibly, even though the moon can appear extremely bright in the night sky, the moon's surface actually only reflects 3 to 12% of the sun's light. However, this is absolutely nothing, nothing compared to the granddaddy of all moon conspiracies, 
which simultaneously outshines the flat Earth and somehow, strangely, also intersects with it. That's right. Let's talk about that moon landing conspiracy. The idea that NASA never really went to the moon is something that started in the 1970s. The original form these conspiracy theories took was simply that the US wanted to beat the Soviet Union to the moon, so they staged a moon landing. Simple enough, right? This coming at a time when Watergate and the Pentagon Papers were fresh in the minds of Americans, eroding any trust that the average person had in their government in the US. The so-called evidence that proponents of this conspiracy theory present are perceived anomalies in the photographs and footage taken on the moon by the Apollo astronauts. If you ask a flat earther, Stanley Kubrick is the one who faked the Apollo launches and moon landings. But according to Rick Feinberg, the press secretary for the American Astronomical Society, faking the moon landing would have been next to impossible. But Feinberg doesn't stop there, going on to say, about 400,000 scientists, engineers, technologists, machinists, and electricians worked on the Apollo program. If in fact the main motivation for believing in the moon hoax is that you don't trust the government, you don't trust our leaders, you don't trust authority, how can you feel that 400,000 people would keep their mouths shut for 50 years? It's just implausible. While a moon landing denier is most likely to tell you that the American flag and the Apollo program footage appears to be waving, which would be impossible because there is no wind on the moon, this is easily explained by the fact that the flag planted on the lunar surface isn't an ordinary flag at all. Planting a regular flag in the moon's microgravity would have led to some very unappealing photographs. So they specially designed the flags taken up to the moon by the Apollo astronauts. Each of these flags feature a horizontal rod to keep the flag in an open position. The astronauts, however, had difficulty extending this rod, creating the ripples in the flag that we see in the photographs. In NASA footage, the flag only moves when the astronauts are messing with it or planting the rod into the moon's surface. After this point, the flag keeps to the bent shape that the rod took on and does not move again. Moon conspiracy theorists will also claim that the moon landing is clearly fake because in the Apollo footage, no stars can be seen in the pitch black sky above the astronauts. Flat earthers will also use this as quote unquote evidence when talking about supposedly faked NASA footage of the ISS and pretty much any other photograph or video taken in space ever. This is easily debunked by anyone who's ever used a freaking camera. The exposure used for all the NASA Apollo footage is all set to daylight exposure. A couple this with the fact that the Apollo astronauts had extremely reflective suits, and it's easy to see why there aren't any stars in the footage. If you want to test this yourself, try filming anything in the middle of the night using your camera's daylight setting it's very unlikely you're going to see any stars in the footage either. And that certainly wouldn't be proof that stars don't exist, although I probably shouldn't give these flat earthers any ideas. The next piece of quote unquote evidence a moon denier might present is the idea that the shadows in all of the moon landing photos are apparently wrong. The claim is further extrapolated by the idea that since the sun would be the only light source, and since there are some objects shrouded in shadow that can be seen in the photographs, then those objects that can be seen shouldn't be visible in photographs. But this idea, or conspiracy theory, while sounding compelling at first, ignores one crucial light source on the moon, the moon itself. Yes, the moon reflects between 3 and 12% of the sun's light, as we mentioned before, meaning that the light cast by the sun on the moon is scattered all over the place, with a small percentage of it bleeding into the shadows. One of the last arguments someone who believes that the moon landing was a hoax will probably use is that they can't see Neil Armstrong's camera in this famous photograph. This is easily debunked because the astronauts couldn't possibly have carried a large camera on the moon with how bulky their spacesuits were. So NASA had to design a completely new camera that was built into the suit. You can clearly see in the reflection of the helmet in the image that Neil Armstrong's hands are touching something on his torso, which is the camera embedded in his suit. 
There are many more moon myths to cover, and if you want to see a part two, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Cat. And be sure to check out the Patreon, where you can get early videos, exclusive science fiction, horror, and dark fantasy stories, your name in the credits, and much more. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.